Hey what's going on guys, this is 12th Harbinger and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to give you a tier list for all the simulacrum traits we currently have in 1.0. Keep in mind that this is a comparison video for simulacra traits and not the actual simulacras. Before we get started, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Let's jump right into it. If you guys don't know what traits are, each simulacrum has a unique trait from which you can get various buffs. You can unlock traits at 1200 and 4000 awakening points. Awakening points can be gained by giving gifts to a character. Now to activate these traits you need to go to the simulacra screen and turn on the trait that you want to use. You can use a different simulacra skin and activate some other simulacra's trait. You can buy gift boxes from the training shop. You can get training points by doing these trainings so make sure to do them daily. Other way is from Crystal Dust Store, but it is better to get all the booster modules and advancement modules first. An NPC in Banja's Black Market, Hopkins will give you a free gift daily. You can buy gifts weekly from Claude in Banja's Dock. And the last way to get is from the claw machine in Cetus Island. Now coming on to which gift should you give them. You can always see different types of gifts your character needs at the top over here. If you give these types of gifts to your simulacras, you will get extra 20 points for each title you match. For example Nemesis here needs toys, decorations and everyday items so I will select the type of gift which contains these titles. Here I found one gift which contains two of these titles so when I give this gift to Nemesis I will get 40 extra points. So try to find a gift from which you will get maximum points. For this tier list I have considered the trait you unlock at 4000 awakening points for every character. So in the S tier, I will put Subasa. Subasa has a very amazing trait where you get up to 18% attack buff just by hitting the enemy. This is very helpful for solo content and also for dealing more damage in team battles. Next we have Samir. If you avoid getting hit, you can get up to 20% increased damage. This the best one to get in team battle if your team has a really good tank. In solo content it might get difficult to get all the stacks as you need to dodge every attack. So depending on how you play, Samir's trait will be S tier, A tier or even B tier. But since you will mostly be using aerial attacks where most of the time enemies attacks won't reach you, keeping her buff up shouldn't be much of a problem. I will put her in S tier. Next we have Crow. Crow's trait will give you extra 10% damage as long as you are not in a team, and extra 12% damage for 12 seconds when you enter in combat. So for solo content, Crow is amazing. I will put him in A tier, he is more like a plus tier for solo content but as his trait is useless in team battles, he goes into A tier. Moving on to Shiro, Shiro will give attack percent buff and physical damage buff on using a weapon skill or discharge skill. But this buff has a downtime of 8 seconds. Shiro's trait excels in physical comp. So if you are planning to main Claudia in the future or using Bai Ling, you should get Shiro's trait. Other than in physical team, her buff is not so great compared to Subasa, Samir and Crow. So in physical teams Shiro's trait will be S tier other than that in my opinion she will be around low A tier. I will put her in low A tier as she is not that great in other comps and has a cooldown on her buffs. Next we have Kokorator. Koka's trait is for buffing the whole team. This is not for solo content. After you use a support weapon, your team will get increased healing and all your allies will get 15% attack buff. For solo content this trait will be useless as the description says only nearby allies will get the attack buff. In team play this will go to S tier. But keep in mind don't prioritize this over Subasa, Samir or Crow. Next we have an SR character, Echo. Echo's trait is also for buffing your team. Not for solo play. The damage increase is only 6%. You also need to give up one weapon slot to use Echo's weapon for the buff. You can get this trait if you don't have Coco. I will put this in B tier team buffing category. Moving on to the poor Deluc, King. His trait is for survival. For every 5 enemy you kill, King will restore 10% of his max HP. This can be helpful for wormhole. 
Other than that, it's not so great. I will put him in B tier. Now, Ice Queen of Tower of Fantasy, Meryl. Her trait gives frost damage reduction, gives immunity to frostbitten effect, and reduces the duration of being frozen. This trait is for tanking only frost bosses. Not so universal, B tier. Next, we have Zero. Zero's trait reduces your relic cooldown every time you use a weapon skill with a cooldown of 5 seconds. This can be useful if you rely on your relics for enemy battles. His trait can be helpful for open world exploration. In my opinion it is not so great in battles as we mainly rely on character damage. Also the weapon skill cooldown for most of the characters is too long, hence it goes in B tier. Now, Nemesis. Her trait will give her additional damage when you summon an electrode and will also heal everyone around it. Her trait is not so great at zero advancement as we won't be using her discharge skill most of the time, but after you unlock her first star, it can become a bit useful as you can summon an electrode with her weapon skill. But that's not much of a deal compared to the other top traits we have. So I am putting her in B tier. Lastly we have Hugh Ma. After taking damage, you get one fortitude mark which is used up for a shield after using a weapon skill. Max fortitude stacks you can get is 12. If you take flame damage, you get an extra stack. This is currently the best trait we have for tanking and survival. S tier trait if you are a tank in your team. This is also very useful for solo content for survival. Amazing trait for wormholes. But for solo, the DPS traits are much more important. So I will put her in A tier. Hope this video was helpful. Comment down below which trait do you think is the best and if you want a tier list for weapons. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.